Okay, so here, it is an important skill to be able to manipulate and analyze, not analysis, and analyze graphs in order to fully understand all the information contained. So this skill is something we're going to use throughout the whole course. Why? Because it helps us manipulate and analyze graphs. Guarantee you will have a question on your diploma where you will have to use these skills. Okay. So, as we just discussed, this y equals mx plus b is a linear line shape. Okay, so it's a linear line shape. This is its equation. What does it mean between y and x? y and x are directly proportional. That means when y increases, x increases. You can write that in there if you would like. As y increases, x increases, like directly. Or if y decreases, x decreases at the same increment, right? Or at a, a proportional increment. So if we were to just draw a graph of that, it would look, as we had said before, like that, okay? There's lots of different shapes of linear graphs, but that is an example. Okay, so let's think about some of the other types of mathematical um, equations and what their shapes would look like. So say we have this equation, y equals x squared. This is a parabolic shape where the y is proportional to x squared, right? That's, we can see that. That's just this y, in, like if y increases by a certain increment, x will increase by its squared, okay? So what will it look like? Do you know? Use your finger and show me. What do you think it will look like? Like an acceleration? Yes, yeah, yeah, okay. So, like, whoop, my whoop didn't have much of a bottom there. Okay, I'm just going to redo that. Okay, that was worse. <laughs> okay, you get what I mean. All right, thank you. Okay, so next, um, what if we had y is equal to uh, the square root of x? This is an inverse or parabolic around the x-axis. When we talk about it, we can say y is proportional to the square root of x. So what will that one look like? Yeah. Okay. All of these, by the way, you need to know. You need to be able to look at a graph and be able to in interpret, okay, is that an inverse or what, okay? Um, okay, what if we had y is equal to one over x or y is equal to one over x squared? This will give us a hyperbolic shape, which is inversely proportional. So we will have something like so. Blah. Doesn't really, can't touch. You ready? Okay. I really hope. I hope you'll get it. Okay. We'll do this example. Okay. So, say we're told we are, have a graph of kinetic energy versus velocity. You think to yourself, okay, this is the first thing you think of. What formula relates these two variables? Okay, that's the first step. Think, what formula relates these two variables? Can you think of one? Kinetic energy. Very good. Yes, okay. So even though... 
there's not there's no mass on that graph, right? There's not there's not an M on the graph. Why not? Why don't we care what M is? If I was doing an experiment where I was measuring the kinetic energy of a change of velocity, what would be my M? What type of variable? It's my constant, right? So M doesn't matter. That's why, that's why M doesn't need to be represented on the graph. That's why it's okay to, that it's in the formula. You see what I'm saying? So you can have a formula that, does, that has more than just E, K, and V in it. But E, K, and V, because E, K is the responding variable, and V is the manipulated variable, right? Manipulated always goes on the bottom, responding on the side. Okay? I don't know if I'm blowing your minds a little bit after two months of summer, but I hope you're doing okay. So, now we think, Okay, so now that you have the formula, that's like step one, is having the formula. Step two is you think to yourself, and we're going to actually write this in. Think, how are E, K, and V, um, what do I want to say, related to each other? And what I mean by that is here in the relationship column. Is it is it complicated? Is it um, are you single? Are you right? Yeah, like on Facebook. Okay. So um, in this column, what is E K to V like? What does it look like from if you look at the equation? Which equation looks like that, so that we can tell what relationship it is? Okay. So, so where so e k is always is will be the y, and then our x is the v. Do you see that? So this is the y. That's our y, and that's like our x when we're thinking of this. So what what's going on with my x? What's happened to it? It's being squared, right? So then I look here and I think, okay, well, which one does that look like? Y is equal to X squared. See? See how they, do you, am I? Okay. So, so out of all these formulas, this looks most like Y equals X squared, right? Okay, good, good. So we can say here, EK then must be proportional, okay, that symbol means proportional to V squared. And I'm just going to put a note because it's most like Y is equal to x squared. That's what the relation, that's what the equation looks like. That's the relationship between y and x. You don't care what any of the other variables are doing because every other variable must be the constant, right? Must be a constant. So you don't care. Mass isn't changing. Anyways, so now if we're just told to sketch it, now it's easy. If like we're just like we don't have any data, we're just guessing what would the general shape look like. So now you look, okay, if it's y equals x squared, what shape must it look like? Well, it looks like that shape right there. Okay. And that's it. Okay. So the, the task for this was to sketch the shape of the graph below. We weren't given any data. All we were told was that the variables that are being compared. But according to physics, we have a formula that is always consistent. If the velocity of an object increases by squared, that's proportional to its kinetic energy. That's what that physics formula says. This physics formula says this is always true. So we will always know that EK is proportional to V squared. So we know, regardless of what object is increasing in speed, that it will always 
have this type of relationship to kinetic energy. Okay? Yeah? Maybe? All right, let's move on then. So here you don't have to write anything. These are steps that I've given you. So you just, I want you to listen carefully. Take out a highlighter if you have a highlighter or any colored types of pens if you like to color, like make it just different colors, that might help you. And we're just gonna talk about each of these steps. Now as you're doing your assignments or any of the questions and you get stuck, come back to these steps, okay? So, Evan wants a highlighter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it says here, it says it is usually easier to analyze a linear graph. Um, okay, it is usually easier to analyze a linear graph. Mm, oh, why did, no, I didn't want to cross it out. That's why it's our goal. Remember how I said at the beginning, a linear graph is our goal. Because it's easier to analyze a linear graph. Therefore, some curved graphs will need to be straightened. Okay, this is the climax. Is it bright? What's happening? I don't know what all these fancy things are. I know, I'm getting used to it too. What time is it right now? Okay, so we're not done till 1.44. Okay, so it must be junior transition. We're like transition into big kid school now. Pardon? Like this reminds me, these bells remind me of like schools that have lots of people. Okay, so therefore some curves will need to be straightened. So it's like, if we think about these, look at, so only one of these was, was a linear graph. What if we have these that are curved, but we want them to be straight? Well, that's weird. Why would I have to make a curved thing straight, and how could I even do that? That's weird. Have you ever done that in math before? You can actually take something that's curved and manipulate the data so that it is straight and make a linear equation. That is going to be our goal. That's what we're going to do. Okay, I'm going to teach you how. It's not as scary as it sounds. We can do it together. Okay. But as long as you understand what the goal is, that's actually, that's actually like you're one step ahead of, yeah. You're one step ahead, okay? All right, so below are the steps needed for curve graph straightening. So highlight or circle that thing. This is really important. Now, that's for straightening. It, I just want us to look below here and say, um, below are the steps needed to interpret and analyze a straight line graph, okay? So these are two different procedures. Do you see that? One is to straighten. Now, once you have something that is straight, now you can analyze it, okay? Straighten first, then analyze. If it is already a straight graph, what do you think you gotta do? You gotta skip down to this procedure, okay? Yes? Okay, you guys are on it. You're so ready for school. You're just cruising. Yeah, you are. Okay, so let's look at this one first. Step one. Identify what is the manipulated variable. Okay, we've already been discussing that, right? So manipulated variable x. Okay, so this is the one you change and it is on the bottom, the horizontal, okay? The manipulated is always horizontal. It's the one you change. 
So sometimes that's important to know because sometimes it will just give you an explanation of the experiment, and you need to be able to see, okay, well, what did they do in the experiment, and see, okay, that's when they change. So think of the word manipulate. I'm manipulating something. You do it. Okay, if you're manipulating somebody, you're doing stuff to them, right? Okay, I'm manipulating. Got it? Okay. All right. So next, the responding variable. Think of that word. It's response. It is your result, okay? And it's always vertical, okay? Okay, so you want to find what's your x and what's your y. Now, just like we did with that one before, we looked at ek and we said, okay, ek is the y, v is the x. That's what I mean when I say figure out which one is which, okay? Figure out which variable. Then, identify or create the physics equation that describes the relationship between the two variables. Okay, so I'm going to actually make another little summary over here. That's what we've talked about so far. Step one, find x and find y. Step two, find the equation. Okay? Step three, this is the hard part. Rearrange the equation to isolate the responding variable. What that means is make equation where you have like y is equal to everything else. So you rearrange it so that it's, like, we, ours worked out well because, um, because e, like, e, it was just ek equals half mv squared, but what if it was, like, m is equal to e square root of ek over v, like, and you had to rearrange it to solve for ek? We just got lucky because ek was the beginning. Okay. Recognize, step four, recognize what is happening to the manipulated variable. Is it squared or inverse or square rooted? That means this part. Figure out what's going on with the x. Figure out which, what's going on with the x. According to the physics equation, and plot, plot a new graph with the new manipulated variables as described by the physics equation. So you will have to, I'm, instead of saying new, I'm going to say manipulate x and plot your graph. Now I will show you examples of what I mean by that shortly. Okay, so straight line graphs can be interpreted and analyzed according to the mathematical formula that gives us y equals mx plus b. So that's why, that's, if we had a, a curve graph, we need to make it straight because we want this. We want it to be able to fit y equals mx plus b. Okay. So, Do you want to do the example of what I just showed you before we do the next procedure? Or should we just do the next procedure and show you everything all at once? Let's do the example. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I just don't want you to get lost in the steps is what I'm worried about. Okay? So let's, let's go to this example and work with it. And then I'll do the next procedure and we'll go back to it. Okay. So, example. A student performs an experiment to measure 
how the centripetal force changes as the velocity is altered. He collects the data shown on the table. So he found the centripetal force, which is measured in newtons, and um, uh, changes as the and he changed the velocity. Okay, so identify the manipulating and responding variable. Plot the data on a graph. Did I give you graph paper on the back? Okay. Okay, it's okay. Um, okay, so what is our manipulated variable? What is he manipulating? He's only manipulating velocity. Yeah, okay. So let's make a note of that. Velocity is manipulated. So then what is this going to be, x or y? X. X. And my centripetal force is the responding. So it is my y. Okay. So that was step one. Find x, find y. Check, good. See, not so bad. Okay, plot the data on a graph. We didn't do that. Identify the physics equation that relates the two variables. We're just gonna skip plotting it just for right now, okay? So, did I do centripetal force with you last year? Yes. Is this a yeah, we did? We did, okay. I sometimes forget what physics 20 is and what physics 30 is. Okay, so what's centripetal force? How can I find it? What's my formula? What, it, what is like always the default for force? Force is equal to? Yes, okay. So I can start with that. F is equal to M times A. And I'm going to say specifically centripetal force is equal to M times A. Um, centripetal acceleration. So I'm going to put the C subscripts to make note that it's centripetal. Okay, now I can expand my AC. Okay, okay, my centripetal acceleration, I'm going to substitute in for V squared um, uh, so that I can have my V. So remember that AC is equal to V squared over R. So now I'm, I can substitute that in. So my formula is going to be FC is equal to M times V squared over R. So that's great. So that's how these two things relate to each other. See that? My FC is my Y and my X is my V. See that? So here's my X. And here is my y. Okay? So, what needs to be plotted on the x-axis to produce a straight line graph? Replot this graph, straight line graph. Okay. So, I just want us to think about this for a minute before we do the plotting. So, when you look here at these formulas, what does that look most like? Y is equal to what? X squared. It looks most like this one. Y is equal to X squared, right? That's what it looks like. Okay. So that's how they are proportional to each other. Now, so what I need to think is FC is proportional to V squared. Okay. That's the relationship. Yes? Because I'm assuming my mass of my object and the radius is the same, right? It's going to stay the same. Okay, so what I need to do is I want, if I can make this true with the data, my graph will go straight. I'm going to show this to you and then you will plot it and you will see. Okay, watch. So. So I'm going to say it one more time, so listen very carefully. If I can make this statement true with my data, I will get a straight line graph. Okay. So I looked at the relationship, and if I can make the, the data look like that, I will get a straight line. So what is V right now? It's just V. It's just meters per second. 
If I square all of this, I will get a straight line. So, I will show you what I mean. So, in this column, I'm going to put v, v squared. Okay? That, that means that it's x squared. Okay? So, I'm going to plot fc proportional to x squared, and I will get a straight line. So, what now my units have also changed. Before, my units were meters per second. What are they now? Yes, if I, I can do meters per second in the bracket squared or meters squared per second squared, just bringing the exponent into the bracket. So you could write it. So just be cautious of that when you're doing your actual graph to make sure your units are appropriate. Okay? All right. So now take each data point and square it. So what is one squared? One. And keep the sig digs appropriate so it's 1.0, okay, not just one. What is two squared? Great, 4.0, okay, and you can continue. Your mind shouldn't be too sore, right, from, from summer, okay? Okay, so let's just see here. Okay, so um, what needs to be plotted on the x axis to produce a straight line graph? Replot this new straight line graph. So, what we are saying is if fc is proportional to v squared, then x needs to equal v squared to make a straight line graph. Oh, I'm just going to hit pause. So, I, 